So today I was thinking to myself, you know, I've got some never used Pokemon that really could use some spotlight here. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. As it turns out, my opponent has the complete opposite idea and is working with a bunch of overused boys. Uh, and it's going to make it a little bit difficult on my squad of outcasts to make stuff happen. But we are up for the challenge and I believe in the lad. So leave a like on the video if you do as well and let's get into it. One thing that I noticed from the start is that this guy's team actually doesn't have anything that can take a sleep powder, so I decided to lead off with the Vile Plume, and that's you know, exactly what my stinky flower ass is going to do. I'm going to go right for a sleep powder, kind of guarantee that something gets put to sleep, as he actually ends up leading off with the Rotom Wash, which literally all my homies hate Rotom Wash. Such an annoying Pokemon, we stay stinky out here. So he actually ends up going into the Gliscor. Uh, that's actually completely fine. I'm able to get the sleep powder off on this thing, of course, before the Toxic Orb activates. And it's super nice to have this thing uh, asleep, just because my team does not handle Gly score literally at all. I don't have any ice coverage, uh, but what I do realize is Vileplume actually has a pretty solid matchup. I, the thing can't really hurt me, and I can just slowly, you know, suck the, the life out of that dude. Pause. Anyway, he ends up going into the Heatran and decides he doesn't really want uh, Gly score to stay in and burn some sleep turns. The one thing is, with, the, with that boy asleep, he knows that obviously I can't put anything else to sleep. Uh, so at least that's thing, that thing is tucked in the back, I don't really have to worry about it as an immediate threat right now. But, now I decide I don't have much to switch into a Heatran other than my Claydol. Now this thing I know can likely take two attacks, as it ends up being Magma Storm, and this evil-ass Lava Frog has been the bane of my existence for too damn long. Uh, but luckily Claydol looks like I can take another one, unless it's like super max damage, uh, or he decides to go for something else. Um, important to note, we do actually see the life orb there, so I know kind of what this set's going to be, just full all-out offensive. Uh, but this should me should allow me to be able to get up my stealth rock, which is of course going to be important. Going to kind of limit switches, and this dude's going to be switching around like crazy, as we've pretty much seen so far. So, I say I'm going to put an end to that, or at least make you pay for that shit. Set up some stealth cocks, and that's going to be pretty solid as he ends up going into the white girl with a booty, the, the Blissey. Um, again, another super annoying Pokemon to deal with, but... Uh, now, luckily, I have a couple of different options on this team for this thing. So, of course, Claydol doesn't really have anything to do staying in here. So, I have to switch out and I side, decide to go into the Fero. Now, this is a Choice Banded Kmart version of Ho-Oh. And it actually hits pretty damn hard. And uh, he enjoys eating eggs. So, I figure, you know, this is kind of a win-win situation here. So, he actually just ends up going for the Seismic Toss. Fero doesn't really give a shit about that. All I care about is eating them eggs. But I know... Uh, this Blizzy's probably going to want to stay about 50 miles away from me at all times, so I expect to switch here. Seeing by their playstyle, he's going to be doing some switching, and I can go for the U-turn, get a pivot, and then get a little bit more momentum on my side. So, that is exactly what happens. Ends up going right into the sleeping vampire bat, and I just tuck the Fero in the back for later. As long as there's not Stealth Rock up on my side, I can bring that Fero in and kind of pressure out stuff like the, the Blissey uh, for quite a while here. So... I'm just going to go ahead and switch into Ballin real quick, get a little bit of momentum here. I can intimidate it because obviously I'm about plenty of shit, and I can potentially start setting up here. Uh, now he does have a couple different ways to stop this Quillfish, and that is pretty much Rotom Wash, unless I can catch it with a Poison Jab. So I decide, I'm just going to test out the waters here, dip the, old, dip the old toe in, see what he decides to do. I go for the Aqua Jet, as I'm actually not even carrying Waterfall on this thing, and he does end up bringing in... The goddamn washing machine. He's over here spinning his little thing, looking just like an absolute menace. And, uh, of course, that's not going to be able to do too much. Although, the game's looking pretty open for me. If I can be able to potentially set this thing up with that priority Aqua Jet later, it's going to be super nice. So, I figure, you know, maybe I'll try that shit again later. But for now, I'm just going to go into a different spherical homie, which is Triangle the Electrode. And if you guys remember this Electrode... Uh, I'm pretty sure you qualify for a veteran's discount, but uh, he ends up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which is kind of what I expected. I knew he probably wasn't going to go for something like the Hydro Pump, so at least the Electrode has a pretty decent easy switch in here, which is not something you can really expect from using a damn Electrode. Uh, plus, this thing was basically nerfed in this generation because its move pool is way more restricted than usual. Uh, but he's pretty much here just to Volt Switch and Thunderbolt stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do either of those things. I'm just going to go right for the Explosion. And the reason for this is because I know Electrode provides me pretty much no value in, in the rest of this match. He literally has so many answers to this triangle. He's got the, you know, I, I can only electric attack, so he has the Gliscor. He has Tyranitar with great special defense and a Blissey. So it's a bad time to be an Electrode. So I just go ahead and blow my electric guts all over the place. And <laughs> I mean, at least this does provide me 
value in that. Now I get a matchup against Tyranitar. So, I mean, the, the homie triangle had to take one for the team. Uh, the burn damage electrode with the, <laughs> the choice specs. Explosion OP. But what this does do is allow me to switch into good head. So this Tyranitar says, I'm not looking for any good head today, sir. I will switch out and ends up going into the Gliscor. However, I know he's going to do this. I am able to make the prediction. I figure uh, the Gliscor is an easy switch into this. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for a head smash anyway. If Ty Tyranitar doesn't want the head, the Gliscor slash Gliscor is going to get it. So that's exactly what happens. And the prediction pays off because that does take care of uh, the buff Zubats. That's amazing. It's a huge threat out of the way. And I'm feeling pretty good about my position, especially with that thing being gone. However, when one McAsshole dies, just another one comes in, and I have to deal with old Rotom again. So, I'm gonna go ahead and save Rampardos for later. That thing has a great potential to get a late game sweep going uh, with Earthquake, as long as this Rotom is taken care of. So, I decide to go into the Vinyl Plume. I'm able to resist both of this thing's stabs and just kind of be annoying. Plus, the good news is, with Gliscor going down, I'm actually able to put something else to sleep now. And that's actually fantastic news, because, of course, he doesn't have a grass type or anything that can switch into a sleep powder, and he kind of just has to delegate what he wants to be put asleep. So, even if he can decide to switch into Blissey here, that thing is just going to be put right to sleep. And then I have kind of some momentum and a couple options on my side. So, he ends up switching out the Rotom. He knows that thing is going to be pretty important, and he does just go right into Woody, the white girl with the booty. And, uh, of course, I am going to be able to hit the sleep powder because the flower don't miss, boys. And Blissey taking a nice little power nap here is actually great for me because I have a solid amount of physical attackers. This thing isn't really that much of a problem, uh, but it is just a huge punching bag over here. And it's looking like it's breakfast time. We're going to scramble these eggs. Um, I have a couple different options. So I'm thinking potentially I could go into Quillfish, try to set up some Swords Dance. But then again, I run into the risk of the Rotom Wash just coming back in, and my Aqua Jet's not even going to scratch that thing. So what I decide to do is go right into Firo. Now, my plan is that I go into Firo, and I can expect him to maybe potentially switch into that Heatran, expecting something like a Drill Peck. He probably doesn't know what Firo is capable of. I do have the, uh, the Drill Run, which I could try to catch that thing slipping with, but I actually decide to just go right for the U-turn, because I actually value the Pivot more than just trying to stay in with the Choice Band Firo damage. However, I do love this homie. Pharaoh is a Pokemon that nobody thinks to ever use, ever, because you probably should never use it, but he's cool, and somebody's got to do it, so I'm taking one for the team. But I end up going for the U-turn. He actually just stays in. He's kind of given up hope uh, for this, this uh, Blissey. He probably realizes that I have just multiple options for it, and I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'll go into plan B, and I'm going to switch into Ballin real quick once again. The absolute legend comes in, intimidate you for no reason at all, just got to assert my dominance, and uh, I'm just flying high as hell in the air here. So here is where I can make some interesting plays. Now, if he decides to stay in, I basically get up a free Swords Dance regardless, even if it wakes up, worst case scenario, uh, potentially uh, paralyzed, but I'm fine with the T-Wave. So I decide to stay in, go for the Swords Dance. If you thought I was sharp before, this boy is sharp as absolute tits right now, and I'm ready to get some damage going. Now, he does wake up, and he's like, you know, I'm just going to go right for the Stealth Rock. Generally, when you see the Quillfish, you're not thinking that it's going to be too big of an issue, especially if you have the, uh, the Rotom Wash. Plus, the, uh, the utility from the Stealth Rock is not too bad, limiting switches with Firo and things like that. So, that is totally fine with me. I am able to go for a nice little poison jab here and hope that he tries to go Rotom Wash, which is exactly what happens. He brings in the washing machine. machine. Who's going to win? One unsuspecting ghost washing machine or one pointy boy? And I'm going to tell you right now, it's the pointy boy. Ballin does not fail me, except for sometimes. But today, he's looking solid. So I'm able to take care of the Rotom, and that is a huge, huge kind of issue out of the way. And now things are looking pretty solid for a Ballin sweep here. Although, the only thing that causes me problems is this Machamp. Now, the reason for that is because a Poison Jab at plus two does about 80%. However... An explosion definitely kills, and I'm never one to pass up an explosion, which is exactly what I do. Ballin always wants to go out honorably, like an absolute champ here, rather than letting this thing take me out. Um, and that is going to empty up the battlefield here, and this allows me basically to just get a late game sweep position going, where I believe he has two Pokemon left. It's going to be the Tyranitar and the Heatran, both of which, of course, are about allergic to the ground, so I can either go into Firo, go for a drill run, or I also have the Rampardos with the Choice Scarf in the back pocket. I decide to go Firo because I'm thinking, you know what? This ugly-ass bird deserves it. Am I right? Um, and he ends up going Tyranitar. Now I'm actually kind of reconsidering my position here. 
I'm thinking with the choice band, I'm pretty sure a drill run kills, depending on what type of Tyranitar this is. Um, but I'm also thinking he might expect something, I don't know, going to Heatran? I just decided to go for the U-turn. Thinking maybe that even kills, it actually does not take care of that Tyranitar. And I'm like, okay, I mean, that's completely fine for the most part. All I gotta do is now, I guess, just go into anything other than Rampardos. Because if it does just end up going for an attacking move here, I cannot let Rampardos go down. Um, so I decide to go into the Clay Blade, ready to spin on some bitches, although he actually ends up going for the Dragon Dance, which is extremely scary, and now I immediately regret my decision to not just go for the Drill Run. It actually would have been way more satisfying had I done that, but I kind of just prolonged the match here, and that now I could find myself uh, having fucked up. But I know that this thing is forced to basically knock me out here. If he doesn't, he just dies to an Earth Power. So also the good news is, at just plus one speed, I think even if this thing is uh, plus speed nature, Choice Scarf, Jolly Rampardos does outspeed, praise the Lord Arceus. So that's exactly what I have to do here, and it's kind of my last option at this point. Definitely did not expect Dragon Dance to come out from the, the Tyranitar, if I'm gonna be real. You never, you don't see that as much in the BDSP meta, while well, it's still a really good set. But, in comes Good Head, and this Tyranitar does look like he could use some absolute smashing head. Uh, so I do outspeed there, luckily go for the Earthquake, and that is going to take care of the Tyranitar. So now he is actually down to, I think it's actually two Pokemon, the Blissey is still alive along with the, uh, the Heatran. Of course, neither of those can take an Earthquake, and now it's basically like you gotta just bend the knee to the Lord Almighty, which, <laughs> which is the Rampardo. Such a cool-ass Pokemon, needs the Choice Scarf to be good, but it really it showed why today. He decides, you know what, I do not want my Pokemon to suffer that fate, decides to end up just running from the match, and uh, that was not how I expected this match to go, and I'm sure Trent probably feels the same. But I had a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> Let me know if you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.